Welcome to Disciples Net Church. We are so glad you've joined us for worship. Feel free to join in with hymns, pray with us, and share in communion. Wherever and whenever you are joining us, God's Spirit and people from all over the world are here with you. So let's prepare our hearts for worship. Would you please join me now in prayer? Gracious and loving God, God of all creation, of majesty and mystery, we come before you in this moment, giving thanks for all that you are, and trembling, anxious to know you better and to follow your will for our lives. We pray, dear Lord, that you see each and every one who is humbly gathered here to worship, even from such great distances in time and place and thought. Yet as we come before you now, each your beloved child, we lift our souls as one in your presence and sing your praise. Dear God, today we humbly ask for a portion of your vision, your wisdom, your power, your grace, so that we may respond as your servants to those in our midst who need so much for us to share your love. Dear God, we also bring before you our own needs, saying these to you now, even as you already know them. Please guide us in your paths and give us that sense of your peace that passes all understanding as we move forward. Some people listening here, dear God, may not know you. They may be seeking your presence, wanting to know you better. Some may be in great distress knowing that something in their life needs to change, that they are ready to surrender their lives to your will. We pray for them, dear Lord, and ask that you give them the reassurance they need that you are and will be their God for now and all eternity, that you have sent your Son Jesus to help show us the way to you. We thank you for hearing us, for accepting our feeble calls. Dear Lord, I am yours. Take me, guide me, use me as you will. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And we ask now that you continue to hear our prayers together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
from Matthew 13. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in the parable, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. I don't often begin preaching by explaining what kind of sermon it's going to be, but I think I need to today. When I was a second year seminary student, I was pastor of a small rural church who were used to having student pastors who often preached and led discussions, shall we say, proud of what I learned in class this week in seminary. I remember a conversation with a group of ladies about a Bible study. They wanted to have a Bible study, but then one of them said to me, but we don't want to learn anything. What she meant by that was she really wanted a Bible study that was more devotional and less academic in its nature. She didn't want me to come in and try to teach a Bible class the way my seminary professors did to me. Today, I attempt to be a little more Bible study, a little more introspection, maybe a little less inspirational and devotional in the sermon. First, I want to begin by acknowledging the traditional understanding of this parable. Jesus explains it very simply and very well when the disciples do not seem to understand. The seed is the word of God, the gospel message itself. The different soils are the different types of people who hear and understand or not, who hear and care, or not, who hear and act upon it, or not. We won't overlook that. It's one of the most powerful of Jesus' parables. But I would suggest that we might add to our understanding of this parable today by looking at it from a different perspective. Now, second 50-year-old Bob's a seminary student story. Many years ago, I had a seminary professor who uttered in class one day, who uttered a two-liner that absolutely blew me away. It has been a bedrock, a foundation of my understanding of ministry for 50 years. I have never forgotten it. The statement was this, sometimes it is the world who preaches the gospel and the church who needs to listen. 
Sometimes it is the world who preaches the gospel and the church who needs to listen. Now, when I was growing up, that's not the way they taught me in Sunday school. When I was a kid, that is not the way we talked in Sunday evening youth group. This was a new idea for me at that time. Well, since I've been old enough to notice what's going on around me, since I was a very young man, but before being a teenager even, since I was young, I have been touched in a profound way by hurting people in the world, trying to speak out, send a message. School desegregation in the 50s, many other aspects of the civil rights movement, movement in the 60s and 70s, military draft, Vietnam War in the 60s and 70s, natural disasters, starvation in parts of the world, more wars in our time today, the COVID-19 pandemic, in our time today, African-American people who feel they cannot even be safe in our own time. Somebody make him stop, you may be saying. Somebody make him stop. I hope some of our Disciples Net folk have not already turned off their video today because they didn't like where this was going. And of course, any student of history will remind us today that my little list is limited to my own lifetime and my own awarenesses. The real list is far broader and has been going on since the beginning of human history. I invite us today to look at Jesus' parable of the sower from a different perspective. I believe there is something for us, us meaning the church, and I'm going to say church a lot in the next few minutes, and let's make it clear when I talk about church, I'm talking about you and me in Disciples Net. When I use the word church, I'm talking about whatever local congregation you, your family and friends may be part of. I am talking about the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. I am talking about the church universal, the entire church everywhere. I believe the world is, in fact, shouting a gospel message that is twofold. It is, first of all, a desperate cry for help. And secondly, it is a message sharply telling us things about this world that we do not want to hear. That is the seed. That is the seed. I believe that we, the church, are called to listen, receive, and act upon that message in a faithful way. We, the church, are the soil. The church, and again, I remind you what all that I mean for that to include, a church can refuse to hear or to take seriously what goes on in the world. We can cover our eyes, cover our ears, and shout, Christ is coming, Christ is coming, Christ is coming. And we are, in fact, the path. We are the hard ground upon which the seed, the message, falls and never has a chance. People use language like the church that has so much heaven on their minds that they're not any earthly good. Church. Church really believes that the kingdom is within itself. The church does, in fact, have some caring about the needs of the world, but believes that the solution is traditional evangelism. Get all of the poor and the miserable into our fold. Get them in with us and they will be happy and everything will be wonderful. That feels kind of warm and fuzzy, but it does not accomplish very much. This church is the rocky ground, the soil that is on rocky ground in Jesus' parable. And rocky ground, by the way, does not mean that the soil is filled with gravel and little pieces of stone. Rocky ground in this 
parable, this language, means that there is a ledge of rock underneath a very shallow layer of soil. And that ledge of rock holds moisture. And it also holds warmth. And it makes the seed grow very quickly in that little piece of soil. But that same piece of rock makes it impossible for the seed to put down strong, healthy root. And even though it grows quickly, it does not mature and it does not bear fruit. Church can be that rocky ground. And then the church hears, at least partially understands, genuinely cares, genuinely, genuinely wants to answer the world's call. The problem is that there's just not enough resource of time, of money, of energy. I, 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 we have to pay the bills. We have to buy materials. We have to pay the pastor's salary. There, there's just too much to do. And this church is distracted enough with its own business that even when it has the right idea and has the right desire, it cannot accomplish very much. Doesn't this church sound a lot like the soil in the field that had so many weeds that the seed could not grow? And of course, finally, this church that is genuinely good soil. This frustrating and disturbing teaching of Jesus it is, in the end, a parable of hope. There is a crop, and a bountiful one. All is not lost. We in the church, and again, whether that's Disciples Net, all the way up to the church universal, we can, if we will but hear, this twofold message of the world reminds you again I am suggesting that that twofold message is a desperate cry for help and a teaching telling us things about the world that we do not want to hear. When we hear that and respond with Christ's love, there is a crop. As I reflect on this a little more, I guess I believe that almost every church I have ever known is a mixture of these soils, depending upon the individuals in the church and how they hear the word of the world or the gospel message, the seed that is sown. Oh, wait a minute. Aren't we back where we started now? They who have ears to hear, let them hear. In the heart, still now I'm in. There's a work for all to do. Heart the voice of God is calling to the heart is calling you. Little is much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. In the mad rush of the Broadway, in the and the strife tell of Jesus love and mercy give to them the word of life little is much when God is in it labor not for wealth or fame there's a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus name Are you laid beside 
today? What are you hearing from the world? Is it crying? Is it rejoicing? Is it challenging you to do new things? What is the gospel that's coming to you? I invite you today as we come to this table to take a moment, pause, and reflect and listen. So let us take a moment and listen. I give you now an opportunity to come to the table that Jesus has prepared for you. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for all the gifts you have given us. We give you thanks for the gospel that we have. We give you thanks also for all there is still to hear from our world. And as we partake of these elements, we ask that you bless them especially so that as we take them into our own being, it gives us strength and wisdom to learn what we need to learn, and when we learn it, to do what we need to do. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. The night that Jesus gathered with his apostles, he took bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. And in the same manner, he took a cup after supper. And he gave it to them, and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink it, all of you, and remember me. So now all is in readiness. Come, partake of the feast that Jesus himself has prepared for his children.
receive every part of the gospel message from the Bible and from the world around us? Go be the church. Amen.